with objects a lot in Publisher. Aside from setting up your pages, as you'll learn to do in just a bit, almost everything you do in Publisher will involve working with objects. This lesson is going to cover some of the basics of working with objects. As the course progresses, we'll teach you more advanced features for objects that are available with Publisher 2013. First, let's talk about moving objects. Whenever you click on an object and select it, a bounding box appears around it, which is what we see here. Hover your mouse over the box until you see a four-way arrow, like what we've got on our cursor here. Now click and drag to move the object to where you want it on the publication. To move or remove objects from a publication, you can choose to either cut or copy. To place them somewhere else in the publication, or in another publication, you would choose paste. Let's talk a little bit about how to cut, copy, and paste. So first, to cut objects means to remove an object or text from your page. Don't confuse this with delete, however. When you use cut, you're cutting it from your page and moving it to the clipboard. We'll learn about the clipboard in just a minute. When you delete an object, it's erased. To cut an object, such as a graphic, picture, or text box, click on it. You'll see the box form around it. Move your cursor over a line on the box, right-click, and select Cut. If you look over here on your clipboard, the object now appears there, and it's no longer in its original place on the publication. When you copy an object, on the other hand, you leave the existing object where it is, but also move a copy of it to your clipboard. You can then put the copy anywhere else on the page or on other pages. To copy an object, you would do the same as for cut, except when you right-click, you would choose Copy instead of Cut. And you can see our copy appears here on the clipboard. To cut or copy text, select the text by holding your left mouse button and dragging it over the part of the text you want to select. Right-click, and then select Cut or Copy. To paste an object, move the cursor to where you want to position the object, right-click, and select Paste. You could also choose Paste on the Home tab, or just click on an item to paste from your clipboard. And then it appears in our publication. Now we can move the object to wherever we want it in our publication. Pasting text gets a little more detailed because you have more options for pasting in Publisher 2013. So if I'm copying and want to paste my text, we can right-click and you see now that we have three paste options. You can paste using the original formatting of the pasted text. You can paste and merge the formatting of the majority of the text in the publication. Or you can paste the text only. Any graphics or images will not be pasted, but just the text. Now let's talk in a little bit more detail about the clipboard that we brought up earlier. Whenever you cut or copy anything in Microsoft Publisher, it's automatically sent to the clipboard. The clipboard does just as its name implies. It holds what you copy and paste for you to use. The clipboard and its associated tools can be found on the Home tab at the far left end of the ribbon. The clipboard group looks like this. And again, you would click this arrow at the bottom right of the clipboard group to see its contents. The clipboard will open as a long window to the left of your workspace. To empty the clipboard, click on the Clear All button at the top of the clipboard menu. You can remove individual items from the clipboard by moving the mouse pointer over the item, clicking on the arrow button that appears to the right of the object, and then selecting Delete from the drop-down menu. Now let's say that you accidentally deleted something, or deleted it and then decided that you want it back. You might grumble and think that it's a lost cause, right? Wrong. Microsoft anticipated this problem and supplied an easy solution. The Undo button. And that's right up here. Click on Undo, and then your last action is removed. Or if you decide that you would like to delete the object after all, you can click on the Redo button. If Publisher can't redo the last action, then the button will be faded. Now you can also rotate objects in Publisher, and let me show you what we mean. Look at the object we've selected here. If you look at the bounding box around the object, you'll see a small circle above the box. And that's right here. Hover your mouse over the circle until you see this circular arrow appear. When you see this arrow, you can rotate your object to the left or to the right as far as you want. Just hold and click, and you can rotate your object in any direction. We rotated ours to the right. In addition, you can resize objects. You can easily resize objects by dragging on the handles that are on the bounding box. The squares that you see here 
allow you to drag in to reduce the size of the object or drag out to increase the size. However, if you resize objects in this way, you can see it causes the object to become distorted. So if it looks like that, that's a good time you might want to use that undo arrow. The corner handles, on the other hand, will allow you to drag in to decrease the size or out to increase the size without causing the object to become distorted. It keeps equal proportions for the object. You can also resize an object by changing its dimensions. To do this, select the object, hover until you see the four-way arrow again, and then right-click and choose Format Object from the Context menu, and then click on the Size tab. Here you can change the height and width, as well as the rotation of the object. If you want to prevent distortion, click on Lock Aspect Ratio. This way you would see, maybe if I change my height to 2, it'll automatically change the width of the object so that it stays in the same proportions. In addition to resizing and rotating objects, you can also stack them on top of each other. You can stack any object. It can be a picture, graphic, text box, and so forth. So let's stack up the flowers that we have here. To start stacking, select an object and then move it on top of one another. Below, you can see that we've moved these three flowers. But this one is covered up. So if we want to, we can rearrange the stack order. We can make it so one flower appears in front of another or behind another. To do this, select the object that you want to move in front of or behind another object, and then go here to the Drawing Tools Format tab. If we choose Send Backward from the drop-down menu, it sends the object behind previous objects in the stack. If we choose Bring Forward, then it moves the object in front of other objects in the stack, and we may have to click a few times to get it where we want it. You can also click on the arrows and choose Bring to Front or Send to Back to move an object all the way to the front or all the way to the back of a stack. So let's bring our flower forward again. Once you stack objects, you can put them together in a group. This way, if you have to move the objects to another location on the page, the objects that you've stacked with them will move together as if they were one object. This makes it much easier if you've got a stack arranged just the way you like it, but need to move things around. To group a stack of objects, select all of the objects by clicking on them while holding down the control key. You can see there's a little plus sign there. That means that you're grouping objects. Now go up here into the Arrange Group under Drawing Tools and click on the Group button. Look at your objects now. You can still select them all individually, but they appear as one object.